huge appetite in Ireland to tell old stories, even the big rambling long ones that people can't pay attention to, or the small, short, unique ones. And the reason for this, I think, is that we've lost a bit of connection with ourselves and with our own countries, where we come from, and, and we're getting together to tell stories tends to be a pretty good way to come together and listen and learn some stuff. And you can keep on playing what you're playing. <laughs> you see, I like music. I find it relaxes me in the way of telling stories because there was a particular person I want to tell you about. And this is the start of this particular story. And this man, well, he was a pretty popular man where he came from. To a Parnell. Well, he was promised to a particular woman and he was going to dance with her in a hall. And there was a dance and music, and everybody was encouraging the drinking and the dancing and the letting about as people will. And so Mr. Parnell walked in when he saw this woman that he was promised to begin to dance with someone else. He wasn't very happy, was he? So he left. And he walked away, and he was up. He was by Kilmain in jail. And that's where the dance hall was, around the corner. And well, he walked away, and he began to look at the big old moon hanging in the sky, and he began to curse his luck. This night that his mother told him not to go outside, after all, it was on Samhain Eve. Halloween as we know it today, that, that night where the veil between this world and the next becomes that bit thin or more thin. It's so much so that creatures and ghosts can step across this veil into this world and play tricks or steal children away. Stuart Parnell didn't believe in those type of things. So he started walking down the quay. And he heard a strange sort of noise come from behind him. A screeching of sort. We turned around, not sure what that sound was. And all of a sudden a voice, not attached to anybody he could perceive, called to him and it said, Stuart Parnell. I've got a message for you. Now, Stuart was much like you or I would be. He was full of fright. Instead of waiting around to see where this voiceless, bodiless thing came from, well, he ran across the river instead and started just running home, hoping that his mother would have the kettle on. She was good that way. She did, yeah. <laughs> And as he was going across the other side of the river, now on the north side of this lovely city, you'll notice the north and the south is separated by a river. Some say it separates the rich and the poor, but don't believe them. Now this man started running along the river on this side of town, and as he passed the four courts where many men would be hanged back then for the crimes they may or may not have committed, well, he heard another, another voice. I've got a message for you. Now at this point, Stuart was utterly terrified. He didn't care if anyone saw him running away. He didn't care if he even made some fluids from the middle of his legs. He didn't care. He was just legging it at this point. All the excrements were leaking from his body as he was running straight home. He came up around O'Connell Street, straight past where the spire is now. It wasn't back then, believe me you. And he went on the Harcourt Street, turned off, looking for his mother's home. And as he got towards the door, and just when he was about to knock on that door, he heard the final screech, Stuart! Now, if you don't take a message for me, I'll dismember you and separate your skin and live from live. So he stopped. <laughs> he thought, that doesn't sound like great crap. Maybe I should stop and wait to see what the message is. <laughs> 
So he called, looking around to see who was talking to him, still realizing nobody was there. He said, okay, 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 what's your message? I'll take your message and deliver it. Tell Grey Mall that Black Shanglace is dead. And he was very confused. He didn't know who Grey Mall was. He had a clue who Black Shanglace was. And he had a notion who to give this message to. So he knocked on the door and his mother ushered him into the tenement flat they were living in. And they went up the great stone staircases and they looked inside with all the hearts burning and the people that were holding themselves and keeping themselves warm at this cold time at night. And the mother ushered them in to their room. She sat him down she said, Sean, you look as white as a ghost. What's going on? And I heard a voice. Wait. Well, he told her all. I won't go into the details, you just heard me. No. She told him that if this message was to be delivered, you must tell me what the message is. And with the grey cat in the corner and the black dog over there and the cup of tea in his hand, he wasn't quite sure what he was going to say to her. And so he said, well, I, I, I don't understand the message, but all it said to me was, I should tell Graham Mall that Black Shanglace is dead. Now with that, the little grey cat in the corner stood up on two legs and said, ah, ha, ha, That must mean that I am the king of cats. <laughs> and she left out the window never to see me.